What is up everybody, my name is Dan, I hope you are doing great. Today we're going to talk about what is the principle of abstraction and how to use it in Unity and C Sharp. Let's go! Before we begin, it is essential that you know what is polymorphism and inheritance to understand this video. If you don't know what those terms are, I highly recommend that you watch the previous episodes of this tutorial series, but with that out of the way, let's continue. Abstraction is basically the process of hiding some data and only exposing the essential information. So the whole definition of the word abstract is something existing as an idea, but not in a physical context. To understand what is abstraction properly and how to apply it, I've prepared another example. And here, as you can see, I have a shape class which contains two virtual functions, which are get parameter and get area. And so this class right here is implemented by three classes, the square class, the triangle class, as well as the circle class. So I'm using all these classes in another class called shape manager, which inherits from the mono behavior, signifying that it is a script that I'm using in my unity scene. I have an array right here of type shape, which contains all the different kinds of shapes. So we have a square a circle and a triangle in here. And in my start event function, I go through each shape in the shapes array and I print out their name, their perimeter, and their area. In this example right here, there is something wrong that we need to fix using abstraction. And that is the fact that our shape class right here is pretty much returning nothing for both of its functions. And if you think about it, a shape without any definition cannot have a perimeter or an area. We essentially need to restrict ourselves from creating an object from just the shape class, but allow classes like the square and the triangle, which inherit from the shape to be used as an object, just like they are in our shape manager class right here. So how do we restrict a class to be used to create an object and only allow its inheritors to do that? This is where we need to use abstraction and to do so, we must turn our class into an abstract class. And we do this by putting the abstract keyword before our class keyword. And so now if I go ahead and go to my shape manager and I try to create an object from the shape class, as you can see, I get an error, cannot create an instance of the abstract class dan.shape. So I essentially cannot create an object from this class now because it's marked as abstract. Now an abstract class can have abstract methods, which are methods without, so in our case right here, we don't need this get parameter function to have a body because, well, it pretty much returns a zero. In fact, it shouldn't return anything because we don't have enough data to guess what type of shape this is and to output proper information. So what we do is we remove the body and instead of marking it as virtual, we mark it as abstract. Just like that. Let's do the same for our get area function. So now it is required for every single class which inherits from the shape class to contain these two methods. If we try and remove one of the methods, as you can see, we get an error because we haven't implemented all of the members of the shape class. And this is exactly what we want to do because we want each shape to have these functions. Otherwise, well, we might get errors in our shape manager class when calling these functions from a shape class right here as we're doing. So think of abstract methods like virtual methods, but they have to be overrided in the class that is deriving from the abstract class. While virtual methods can be overrided, but they don't have to be overrided. 
Now, another thing to mention about abstract classes is the fact that if an abstract class is inheriting from a mono behavior, which essentially means it should be a script, then it will not be available as a script. So theoretically, if you were to do this, your class would not show up as a script in Unity, as a component that can be attached. Only classes that inherit from this class right here will be able to show up in the inspector when you're adding components. Otherwise, you will get warnings. So essentially, abstract classes can be very useful to group things together. So if you have many types of enemy classes in your game, you can have an enemy base class, which is also an abstract class, which contains some functions that every single enemy should have. So, for example, every single enemy should have some sort of attack method. And every single class that inherits from that class will need to implement the attack method. So that is it for abstract classes. So now let's move to another example where I'm going to show you another method of data abstraction. So I built this example on top of the example that I had in the inheritance video. But now, as you can see, I've added some bricks on the left that are blocking my path. And what I want to happen is for the bullets that I shoot to break those bricks, just like being able to defeat enemies. So every single brick in here contains a brick script. So the way I'm going to do this is similar to how the slimes get damage. So I'm going to create a field called strength, which will basically kind of act like health, but for bricks. So the more the strength, the harder it is to break those bricks. And then I'm going to create a method called take damage, which will be identical to the take damage method in the slime class. And I'm basically going to subtract the damage from the strength. And then I'll check if the strength is equal or less than zero. And if that's the case, I'll destroy the game object. So now moving on to my bullet class, which handles the logic for hitting, for colliding with other objects. I have this on collision event function, which checks if the object that we're colliding with has a slime component. And if it does, the slime takes damage. So now what we can do is just create another if statement but this time check for if the object contains a brick script component and if that's the case we'll just deal damage to it now the important thing here is that if we're going to be creating even more objects that could be destroyed by bullets for example explosives barrels you can give a lot of examples this will be very inefficient as we're going to have so many if statements in here. So to prevent that, in C Sharp, we have a thing called interfaces, which are really, really powerful. And they are essentially another form of data abstraction. So let's try and create an interface for our brick and our slime classes. So here's how you create an interface. I've called it iDamageable because I want this interface to be implemented for every single class, which will have an object that needs to be taking damage from bullets. So think of interfaces like fully abstract classes where they can only have abstract methods and properties. So since the slime class and the brick class share the method called take damage, I'm going to use it in my iDamageable interface like so. And now going back to our slime class, what we should do is implement that interface right over here. And the way we do it is the same as we inherit from a class. But the coolest thing about interfaces is the fact that a class can inherit from multiple interfaces, but a class cannot inherit from multiple classes. So you can inherit from an unlimited amount of interfaces, which can really help you to group things together. Along with inheriting from the mono behavior class, we're going to inherit from the iDamageable interface. 
Now going back to our brick, we're also going to implement the iDamageable interface here. And if you want to implement other interfaces, you just separate them by a comma and list them here like that. But in our case, we just have one interface. And now let's go back to our bullet script. And instead of doing this mess, let's just delete that. And let's just check if the object that we're colliding with has a script that implements the iDamageable interface. And to do it, it's very simple. All you have to do is instead of checking for each type of class alone, you would just check for iDamageable. Let's rename this to Damageable as well. And there you go. So now, whichever class implements the iDamageable interface, I will be able to shoot down those objects regardless. Similar to how abstract methods work, methods of interfaces must be implemented. So now you might be wondering, hey, why do we have an I letter over here in front of our interface name? Well, that is a very good question. If you do not know, C Sharp has its own interfaces and all of them start with an I letter. And so does Unity have its own interfaces, which all start from the I letter. And this is simply just a naming convention that developers tend to use. This really helps us differentiate between what is a class and what is an interface just by looking at the names of them. And so you don't necessarily have to follow this pattern, but it is a very good practice to do so. So now if we run our game, we can see that I'm able to destroy those bricks and destroy the slime enemy without any hesitations. You can also have an unlimited amount of methods inside an interface. So it doesn't have to be just one. We can also have another function called get current health, for example, just like so. So finally, let's talk about what is the difference between abstract classes and interfaces and when to use which. So unlike interfaces, abstract classes can have both abstract methods and regular methods, while interfaces can only have abstract methods. A class can inherit from multiple interfaces, but it cannot inherit from multiple classes. Those are essentially the two key differences of those two. And it's best to use abstract classes when you're trying to group classes that are related to each other, as I mentioned with the enemy example. But when it comes to interfaces, it's best to use them when you're trying to connect certain classes that may have some similar little functionalities, just like we did in this example. And th there can be just tons of moments when you'd be using interfaces when making an actual game. So that is it for our tutorial series. Yes, we've covered all of the aspects and principles of object-oriented programming. There's actually a lot more concepts to cover, but they're not going to be part of this tutorial series. I will probably release videos on their own, uh, explaining other new stuff that you may have not known in C Sharp. So if, if you've enjoyed this tutorial video, leave a like as always. If there's something that I probably missed out on, leave a comment. And if you're excited for more content like this, then be sure to subscribe to subscribe i will appreciate that a lot and stay tuned for more tutorials and more different kinds of game development content that i'll be posting throughout the next few weeks so goodbye and have a nice day